Now, there may be progress, but it's not all good. The deal being talked about now wouldn't resolve the crisis, but rather kick the can down the road, setting the scene for another budget showdown early next year. More on this now with investor Jim Rogers, author of Street Smarts Adventures on the Road and in the Markets. Jim, thank you so much for joining us uh, here today on RT to discuss this. Well, look, um, even if there's no deal to raise the debt ceiling in two days, the U.S. Treasury uh, has got tens of billions of dollars in reserves, and some are saying that, you know, America's economy still has time. What's your take? Well, Marina, first of all, you said they're going to kick the can down the road for a few more days. Marina, we've been kicking the can down the road for 60 years in America. How do you think we got this much debt? We're the largest debtor nation in the history of the world. We've got to do something about it. Every year that goes by, Marina, we go deeper and deeper into debt. Somebody's got to solve this problem one way or the other. Okay, but how can it be solved? I mean, the senators are now saying that they've got a solution, a uh, temporary fix uh, is what they say that would last for a few months. But what happens after that? I mean, uh, it all seems like a do now something, but think later approach. Well, that's exactly right. You use the words temporary fix. That's what it is, Marina. That, you know, this has happened 18 times in the last uh, 30 years or so. They continue to do the same thing. They say, okay, we've got a compromise, we've got a solution. And the next thing you know, two or three years later, we're right back where we started, except the debt is that much higher every time. We're, they can keep doing this, and they have been doing it for 30 years. But Marina, eventually, the market's going to say, we don't want to play this game anymore. We're not going to lend you money at any price then America will then go into sudden and steep decline, just as has happened in the UK and Spain and many other countries over the past two or three hundred years. All right, now let's look back a few years to 2008, the uh, fin global financial crisis. And uh, some analysts were saying back then, uh, when America sneezes, the whole world has a cold. So, I mean, is this a similar situation now? What happens to the countries who have their assets in dollars? How are they affected? Well, Marina, this is all a temporary uh, little game that they're playing in Washington. People who've got dollars are not affected at all. Uh, I would hope they would be. I wish that somebody would, that something real would come out of this. But at the moment, uh, if you own dollars, uh, you should not be paying attention to this. I know, Marina, you're a journalist. You've got to have people watch your TV, but and you've got to report it. But, I mean, people who are real investors are not paying too much attention to this because nothing's going to come up. Well, you know, President Obama a short while ago was talking about America's exceptionalism, and it looks like the exceptionalism extends to the financial sphere as well. I mean, is this right, or is it time now to move away from the dollar as, you know, the major reserve currency? Well, many people in the world were a little embarrassed when Mr. Putin, uh, sorry, Mr. Obama said that we were an exceptional country because historically maybe we are this year. But over the past few thousand years, that's a, a little bit of an embarrassing statement, as many people in the world know. Uh, yes, we're an exceptional country right now. We're the largest debtor nation in the history of the world, Marina. No country in the history of the world has ever gotten itself this deep in debt. And we're going to pay the price down the road. And all of the, our creditors and all of the people doing business with us are, too. We're the largest economy in the world. But we're in decline and we're not solving our problems. Well, but Jim, what, what's the way out of this? I mean, is there a light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak? I mean, uh, the budget and uh, debt showdowns are becoming an annual thing. Where's Brilliant. the end? Yes there's, there's, yes, there's a solution. Take a, an ax, no, take a chainsaw and cut spending. Are they going to do it? Absolutely not. You see what's happening in Washington right now. Same old charade. They will come out uh, in a few days and they will announce everything is okay now. We've solved the problem, and a year or two or three from now, the debt will be up this much higher, and we'll be back at the same place we are now. Only worse, because the debt will be worse. And countries that are lending to America have really, you know that Russia, China, a few other countries are starting to say, we've got to do something else. We cannot keep putting money into U.S. dollars and into U.S. government bonds, because this thing is going to end badly. I'm not the only one who knows that. Many other countries are starting to say we have to find an alternative to the U.S. dollar because these guys are not solving their problems. All right, Jim, it's always great to have you with us. Jim Rogers, investor and author, thank you so much for being with us here in our Thank you, Marina. My pleasure.